the League of Women Voters of Lackawanna County, and I want to thank you all for joining us here this evening for our debate with the Democratic candidates for the office of Lackawanna County Register of Wills this evening. Um, a little bit of information first on the League of Women Voters. We are a political, nonpartisan organization, so we neither support nor oppose any candidate for public office, but we do host educational events, uh, and we do take positions on uh, issues, uh, and we advocate for uh, certain issues that are important to our membership. Um, we are also an organization of both men and women, despite our name as the League of Women Voters. That is a nod to the women who formed the League uh, in 1920. So we have a long history of grassroots uh, activism, and we invite all of you in the audience this evening to join the League of Women Voters and support the work that we do. Some of the other events that we have scheduled for this primary election season. Last night, we hosted an event on the ballot questions that will be, there'll be five ballot questions for Lackawanna County residents. Uh, so it's important that if you are a registered voter in Lackawanna County, regardless of your party affiliation, if you are uh, registered as a Green or Reform or an Independent, if you are registered to vote, you should go and vote on May 21st, even though it's a primary election, because you will be able to vote on the ballot questions. The program last evening was taped for broadcast on ECTV and will be also made available on our website through lwvlackawanna.org. So I invite you to uh, take a look at that program and learn about the importance of the ballot questions and what they mean for Lackawanna County. Uh, next week on May 8th, we will have a debate uh, in this room uh, for the Democratic candidates for Scranton City Council. On May 13th, we'll be in Brennan Hall here on the university campus in the Pern Auditorium for a debate with the Republican candidates for Scranton Mayor. And on May 14th, we'll be back in this room for the Democratic uh, candidates for Scranton Mayor. So we have a full complement of events. All of them will be taped for broadcast on ECTV and be made available on our website uh, through YouTube as well. Um, I want to thank our partner in, uh, in all of the events that we do, both of them, ECTV, Anthony's here taping for us tonight, so thank you, Anthony, for coming tonight, uh, and all the work that Mark and Anthony do to make sure that our programs are available, and also the University of Scranton Political Science Department, and Dr. Parenti is here this evening representing the Political Science Department. Uh, our partnership with the, the University of Scranton means a lot to the League of Women Voters. We have the use of these wonderful facilities and the support of the students and the faculty here on campus as well. So thank you, Doctor, for being here with us this evening. So <clears throat> for those of you who are here in the, um, the auditorium this evening, we do have a program that lists for you all of the candidates who are on the ballot for Lackawanna County. And we included as well the program from last night, which lists all of the ballot questions and the candidates who are running for the Home Rule Charter Study Commission. So that's why you have the second program. It's so that you would have that information to take home with you. I want to mention as well that this is an event for the Democratic candidates for um, the Register of Wills office in Lackawanna County. There is one Republican candidate, Christopher Arnone, and he is here with us this evening as well. He was not invited to participate in this event because as you know, Pennsylvania has a closed primary system. So as a Democrat, you would be able to vote for any of these and Christopher is running unopposed on the Republican ticket. So the details for this evening is that all candidates will answer the same set of questions and no questions were given to them in advance. All questions will have a two minute uh, response limit, so we ask them to finish their remarks within a two minute time period. Um, I may or may not allow a one minute rebuttal. Uh, it's my discretion whether or not I allow rebuttals. And uh, candidates will each be allowed two minutes for a closing statement at the end. The other thing that uh, we've done in this age of media uh, and how easily it's all available, the League has a policy for utilizing um, video, of, video and or audio of our events. Uh, and we've asked each one of the candidates and they've each signed a statement. And in part it says, no person, candidate, or political group is allowed to use or edit any media from an LWVLC event for campaign purposes. Any use of the media requires the expression 
express written approval of our league and the audio or video must be broadcast in its entirety except by legitimate media reporting on events. So if you're taping this tonight, please bear that in mind. The video is the property of the League of Women Voters. So. I'd like to start by introducing our candidates this evening. Again, all of them are candidates for the Office of Register of Wills. We have Michael Durkin, Kim Harding Kelly, Fran Kowalewski, and Paul Nardozzi. So thank you candidates for joining us here this evening. This position for Register of Wills, the primary function is to probate or legally establish the validity of a decedent's will. In cases where a will does not exist, the Register of Wills will appoint a personal representative based on Pennsylvania intestacy laws. The Register of Wills is also an agent for the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue, collecting in excess of $14 million of inheritance tax revenue annually. <clears throat> Another chief responsibility of the Register of Wills Office is the management, storage, and preservation of filings dating back as far as 1878, making this office an excellent resource for genealogical research. From the county's home rule charter, which is the constitution of the county, the election and qualification of this office it states, the Register of Wills shall possess the qualifications for elected officers as stated in this charter and shall be elected to a four-year term in accordance with the procedures for nomination and election as established by the Pennsylvania Election Code. Under powers and duties, the Register of Wills shall retain and exercise those powers granted by general law to Register of Wills in counties whose population is most equal to that of Lackawanna County. He, it says he, shall have the power to appoint clerks and a solicitor. The Register of Wills shall prepare for inclusion in the administrative code an article setting forth the structure, organization, manner, operational procedures whereby the office of the Register of Wills operates and functions. And then just to pull back a little bit, the qualifications of all elected officers in the county, and again, this comes from the Home Rule Charter. Uh, so all of the, the offices, the Register of Wills, the coroner, the uh, district attorney, um, the uh, clerk, of, clerk of judicial records, the uh, recorder of deeds and the sheriff are all officers of the county. So the qualifications of elected officers, all elected officers of the county government shall be registered electors in the county. They shall be at least 18 years of age, a citizen of the United States, and a resident of the county at least one year prior to nomination for any elected county office, and be free of conviction of a felony of any degree and or conviction of a violation of the Pennsylvania Election Code. No person may seek election to more than one of the offices set forth in this article in the same election. So that's a little bit of background on what we found were the duties of the Register of Wills Office and a reading of part of our Home Rule Charter from Lackawanna County. So now I get to the fun part. I get to stop talking and ask all of you questions. Before we started, we drew names, Dan drew names, and uh, Kim Harding Kelly will be the first respondent to our questions this evening. And then we'll move in a round robin and everyone will have two, two minutes to answer the questions. So my first question for you, <clears throat> and I want you to talk about the job itself before discussing yourself as a candidate, okay? So this is about the job. Do you feel the duties and responsibilities of this position are consistent with this description? So what do you feel are the duties and responsibilities of this job overall? So Kim, you're first. Okay, thank you, Andrea, and thank you to the League of Women Voters. Um, the description of the job in one, maintaining the filings from 1894 to today, um, probating wills and appointing a execu an executor, um, appointing clerks and solicitors, and probably most importantly, the uh, collection of inheritance tax are all consistent, I think, with the way the job is performing today. I, I do believe that, that those are the duties of the job and those are the things we need to do. Now, to speak to why I am qualified for that. We're going to ask you that in a second. <laughs> after, so just go on. So, um, so managing in the 21st century all of the filings, all of the an enormous amount of paperwork, digitizing it, um, having it ready for the public, 
Managing a great amount of income that goes to the county is a large responsibility. Again, the Register of Wills. And um, appointing people, I think, that are up to the task of such, um, you know, such an important job. You know, you have to be very particular on who's doing it. This, this is not a great time of life. You're not coming to the Register of Wills at a happy time. You're not. So um, that we can execute these four responsibilities efficiently, quickly, and with consideration to the people that are, are going through this, I think is most important with this job. Okay, thank you. Fran, the same question to you. And again, we'll, we'll ask you about your qualifications right now. I just want you to talk about the job. Well, Andrea, the job is a dual office. I'm, I'm not sure if you realize that. It appears on the ballot as the Register of Wills, but it is the Register of Wills slash Orphans Court. It is a dual office. On the Register of Wills side, the all wills that have been probated since 1878 to the current day are scanned and online, over three million documents, um, and indexed, uh, free to the public. All you have to do is get on the county's website at www.lackawannacounty.org, type in the name, and you can find any will from 1878. That has been done under the direction uh, with me as the office manager. As Orphan's Court, the register is listed on the ballot as a register of wills, but it is a dual office. Um, we reduced staff uh, in November of this year because of the digitalization. And the Orphan's Court part of the office uh, encompasses adoptions uh, from 1925 to the current, uh, guardianships and orphan court records from 1901 to the current, and marriage records from 1885 to the present day. In the Marriage License Bureau, the records started in October of 1885. And, oh, I thought my time was up no. when I heard a sound, sorry. Uh, the um, records are digitalized over uh, 300,000 uh, scanned applications and 600,000 uh, 600, names indexed. Uh, that uh, scanning process happened in-house uh, at no additional expense to the taxpayer. And then we do guardianships. Uh, those are uh, presently being done and that's what I'm hoping to complete. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Paul, the same question to you if you would focus on the job. Absolutely, and thank you, Andrea, for having us tonight, and thank you for the fine folks that came out tonight to hear everyone. The Office of Register of Wills is a very complex office because it's not just, as Fran alluded to, it's not just one, one particular aspect that you're going to be uh, in charge of. I think the most important part, and, and I don't want to repeat what Kim and Fran said because in yourself, you, you're really detailed with the job, and I think we all know what the details of the job are, but I think the most important aspect for us is the protection of the, the integrity and the security of all the records. Um, we're going back to you know, the 1800s here with records and you know, that's, that's quite a few records and you never know when someone's gonna come in to the office and they're gonna need something that's very old. You know? So the, the protection and the integrity of those records is of, is of the utmost. Also, the Register of Wills is a revenue generator for the county and I believe uh, they make approximately between 350 and $400,000 this year as per the county budget. So. Um, it, it's a very important office. It is a revenue generator, and if I'm elected, I'm going to continue the fine work that's been done. Thank you. Okay. And Michael, the question to you as well. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, concerned citizens, for coming out this evening. Um, I find the office to have two separate uh, principles. Principal duties are probating the wills, accepting them as genuine and valid, uh, sharing the accurate filing and accessing of these documents. I think its primary goal is to serve the public. Kim alluded to that, um, Fran alluded to that, and so did um, Paul, about how the office is to serve the public, especially <clears throat> in times of loss of a loved one. Uh, the office uh, has to carry out their, their last wishes, make sure taxes are paid, and that's a very big responsibility for an office that I believe that is, very, is detrimental to the county. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> 
The next question, as I promised, we're going to ask you for your qualifications. And again, moving in around Rob and Fran, you'll answer this question first. Why are you the best candidate for this position? What skills or experience do you have that would be relevant to the job that we've now described? Do you have any accounting, legal, office administration, people management skills, whatever, what is it that you're bringing to the job that makes you the best candidate? Well, Andrea, I've been in the office for the last microphone. Can you pull that microphone closer? <laughs> there you go. Sorry. I've been in the office for the past 18 years. Uh, we are we have a budget of approximately six hundred and fifty thousand a year it varies year to year uh, last year our profits are what we're projecting for this year is close to four hundred thousand dollars we act as a small business within the county and we've always treated it as a small business so we are always looking for ways to generate money and reduce cost um, that's number one number two the, um, I have been the project manager of all the digitalized records. I have overseen the, the project from the, get, from the start to the finish uh, with the Register of Wills files and also with the Orphans Court. Um, we are um, a very secure office. We have uh, very sensitive records there. We make sure that those records are secured the way the courts uh, tell us that we need to. We are um, the only county uh, in the state of Pennsylvania that has this amount of records online free. We are also number five in the United States for a county our size for having digitalized records done. It has been a big process. Uh, I have managed it well. I can tell you that for anyone to sit and say that they've managed this type of project I'm a good manager. I have the experience. Um, in the last um, 18 years, we have had uh, estate audits every um, three years. We have not had a finding uh, in the past 18 years of over $68 million collected in the last five years. So we're very, I'm very proud of what I've done. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Paul, the question is to you. Why are you the best candidate for this position, and what skills or experience do you bring to the table? I feel, number one, that I'm the best, the best candidate for this position. I have served, the position of Register of Wills is an administrative position. I have served, I'm in my sixth term on Dunmore Borough Council, where I've served as the council president, uh, the vice president of council. Um, we've, taken Dunmore, we've taken Dunmore Borough a long way from the brink of bankruptcy four years to four years ago to uh, becoming, becoming solvent. Um, we've also digital, digital, digitized, digitized, excuse me, all our records too in Dunmore Borough over the past, you know, going back uh, 10 plus years. So we're, I'm very familiar with the process also. We've had to oversee it. We had a lot of paper records that had to be, you know, computerized. And uh, my educational background is, my post-secondary is in uh, criminal justice and in business. Um, I've alluded to before, I work for the Lackawanna County Sheriff's Office, so um, there's, there's going to be a time where you may have to go to court. I'm very, uh, with the Register of Wills Office, I'm very familiar with the court process and the court proceedings. I'm in court a lot. I'm also a municipal police officer in Oliphant and Old Forge Boroughs, and I say that because I brought up earlier about protecting the integrity and the security of all the records. I've been protecting and serving for over 20 years. I've been a leader in my community for over 20 years. I've been involved in numerous community service projects, uh, particularly with the youth and senior citizens. And Mike made a good statement before. We're, we're talking about times being tough. You have to be compassionate. And uh, I find myself to be a very compassionate person also. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mike, the same question to you. Why are you the best candidate? And what do you bring to the table? <clears throat> well, I bring to the table, where do I start? I've had a long star-crossed career. I uh, graduated the University, or yeah, Marywood University, when it was Marywood College, that's what's confusing me. And from there I moved to Philadelphia where I worked at uh, Delaware County Courthouse. I do have county experience. I worked for the community, federal, state, and match grants. I was an accountant under the President Carter regime down there. That's dating myself a little bit. And then from there when President Reagan came in, they were abolished and I was an uh, auditor for the magistrates' courts in that area. Uh, from there, I went into the private sector. 
I wanted, I wanted to get into. I went to work for Wang Laboratories. And for those of anybody in the room has gone from public to private, night and day. I was held accountable, revenue generating, expand the customers for the last, uh, should I say 25 years? 25 years ago, I moved back to Lackawanna County after the birth of my son. And I've been had a very successful career in the sales and marketing arena. And I bring the marketing principles, what I've learned in those jobs. I know how to be held accountable. And I think with my focus in automation and accounting and administration and marketing, I could bring a, be a very good asset to the office, bring it out further to the public, let them know what this office does. Because in my campaigning for the last couple of weeks, people said, what do the register wheels do? And I've, I wish I had this with me. I could have read it off to them, but I'd be like, uh, well, here's what we do with probate wills, what's that? But it has to be marketed so that people can utilize what's there as far as we talked about genealogy and using the offices for the public good. Okay, thank you. Kim, finally, the question goes to you. Why are you the best candidate for this position and what skills and experience do you bring to the table? Thank you, Andrea. I believe I am the best candidate for this position. I have over 20 years of management experience uh, directing projects of, uh, in excess of $3 million per project. My last um, foray was three simultaneous projects that cost over $7 million. I brought them in on time, on budget, with, without flaws. Um, I've managed uh, several departments. I've been a director of information systems. I've been a director of application development. I've been a project manager and uh, business systems engineer for Cargill, the largest privately held company in the world. Um, I have never been in the public sector before. I have only been in the private sector. I've been uh, held to an account the accountability standards that Mike has alluded to my entire career. Also, one of the things we're talking about here is digitizing records, bringing things online, making things available in the 21st century, which Dr. Parenti is fighting back about. He doesn't care for it, but we're here, we're in the 21st century, we need to use computers. I can make sure they're secure. I know how to do it. I know system security. I know network security. I know information security. Our current system, Infocom, has open access to the public. That's great. That's fabulous. And everybody's will is online. That's terrific. So is every decedent's social security number. How can we trace if they're stolen? How can we trace if somebody uses that? I can fix that. I can do that. And I'm very good at it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll allow one minute for rebuttal for anyone who wants to rebut then. And starting with Fran, we'll go in a round robin again. When the system was put into place with Infocon about the Social Security numbers, the Department of Revenue said it was not an issue, that those numbers are uh, put into the system as a decedent. They're located in a specific spot, so there is no security risk to anyone with any record that comes out of our office. Paul, did you have anything to add? Mike, anything else? No, I don't think Kim, anything else to add no. to that? Okay. All right. <clears throat> then we'll move on to the next question. And Paul, you'll answer this question first. Um, Fran touched on it a little bit, and that's the budget. Have you reviewed the 2013 county budget, and are there any concerns or recommendations that you would have for this office based on the budget? Anything that's financial for you? Uh, specifically with the Register of Wills, I, I have reviewed the budget. And again, um, the numbers I saw in this year's budget were approximately $700,000 in total budget. And um, I believe they took in for revenue for the county about $350,000, dollars um, One of the things I've been involved in with budgeting is with Dunmore Borough budget. We have an $11 million budget that we've been operating the last couple of years. Um, the Register of Wills budget is, is a lot less. So it's, man it's very manageable just like ours in Dunmore Borough. Um, again, I've been used to being involved in the budgetary process. Um, one thing I like to s explore, if I'm lucky enough to be elected, is to try and increase the revenue that is coming into the county from the Register of Wills office. Um, it is a revenue generator for the county, and I like to see if it's possible or do whatever we can to help save taxpayers money, but at the same time, bring in more revenue to the county. Thank you. 
Thank you. Mike, the same question, or, uh, the same question to you. Have you re reviewed the 2013 county budget, and do you have any concerns or recommendations based on that budget? Well, I did um, briefly go over the budget, and I did go over what Paul just said, was $700,000 in operating revenue, 350000 in, in revenue. Um, well, as I say about that, I mean, it's a manageable budget. Of course, budgets have to be strictly adhered to. And um, I think it was about two weeks ago, I think, Evie McNulty was talking about the offices of Recorder of Deeds and Register of Wills was the third most efficient offices in the state of Pennsylvania. So if we can increase those revenues above and beyond, which I think I'm capable of doing, very capable if we adhere to them, that we, I would strive to make the offices number one, and number one is being the top revenue getters in Pennsylvania. Okay, thank you. Kim, the same question to you. you. Yeah, I have looked at the budget around 700000 which is a truly manageable amount, um, with I think it was $360,000 given back to the county. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't think you can stand outside of an office or outside of a budget and judge. Um, there are a few ideas um, I would have coming in just from a perspective of running an office, running a business, that you might be able to streamline or increase revenue. But again, the budget is a, a smaller budget from, from my experience or pers and perspective. And um, I, I don't believe you can judge from the outside. I believe you have to get in there and look at it and see where you can make it process improvements, revenue improvements. Okay, thank you. Fran, the question to you, and please pull the microphone closer. If you guys would all just remember to pull it up when you're talking, that would be helpful. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Is that fine? I think that's good. Okay. Um, I actually, I worked on the budget this year, and uh, we reduced the budget significantly through a reduction of staff because of the digitalization. Um, less foot traffic coming in. Fees are generated through a court order fee schedule, and so our fees are only, uh, we can only collect what uh, the court order uh, mandates. Um, we are probably one of the highest uh, register of wills in the state. Uh, we call it the Cadillac price. We are as high as we can possibly go um, as far as fees, as far as generating revenue coming in. And it's all about filings and the cost of, you know, the estate filings, the orphans court filings, the adoptions. Um, so that's where our budget is com comes from. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> the next question, Mike, you'll answer this one first. Um, now I want to ask you, what changes would you make in this office if you were elected? Well, that's, I'm glad to go first on that one. Um, <laughs> I have to go back to what Kim just said and listening to her. It's very difficult to uh, be outside looking in without having a hands-on, uh, uh, even a walk through the office. I'm an outsider looking in. I'm a newcomer to the pol political arena. I'm studying the Office of Recorder of Deeds. I listen to what other people are having to say. I'm a listener. I learn by listening. I think that's a good quality. That's what helped me in my sales career. I would have to get in the office. I'm a quick learner. I, I believe I am. And uh, I would, you know, I, I'm an outside looking in. It would be hard to pinpoint exactly what I need to change. But changes, every office in every degree, public or private, can change. They need to change to excel and to be, to be the best. Thank you. Kim, the question goes to you. If elected, what changes would you make? Thanks very much. Um, as you know, I said before, it's very difficult to stand outside an office and point inside and say, what would I change? I can tell you what I would do. I would go in and define the services, analyze how we're providing them, um, maybe even do a customer service survey to say, are you being served? Do, what, are, what are the problems you're having? I would also have the Infocon help desk give me a report that says, who's calling in with problems? What are the problems? And how many users are you getting a hit? Um, so we could kind of analyze our customer base and the things we need to provide. And then I would work through my business process engineering background and find out how we deliver that most efficiently. Because I think that is now in 2013, our biggest challenge is to make government work efficiently in every office, not just the Register of Wells. Okay, thank you. Fran, the question to you, please. Can you just repeat it? If elected, what changes would you make? 
Well, being that I'm in the office right now and I know the day-to-day -day operations, we have streamlined extremely. Uh, we are down to bare bones as far as staffing. We uh, are very efficient. We have um, great service uh, to the general public that comes in, that uses our office. We are helpful. Um, sometimes there are people that come in and we are unable to assist them because the Pennsylvania state law does not allow it. But we will direct that person to the right avenue, whether it be to an attorney, whether it be to the Department of Revenue. We are there as a service operation. Um, same with our marriage records. We, if we have a military, and it happens more often than not these days, the military will come in. Um, they can't get in on a week till Friday night at 8 o'clock. We'll come in, open the office, take that marriage license, uh, make sure they get it back. Military is absolutely the first and foremost when it comes to marriage records or if they have to come in to probate. We open our doors anytime, day and night, for those people. So public service, we are very good at that. Um, you know, there's not really much more we can streamline in the office. We are very efficient, down to bare bones, doing a great job. Okay, thank you. And Paul, the question to you, if elected, what changes would you make? My comment on this question is not directed to anyone, and I want that, I want that to be clear. Um, I think one of the, the major problems any elected official faces anymore is centers around accountability. I think we have to become more accountable to taxpayers and uh, the residents of, of the particular municipality or county that you are serving. Um, and in that, in that regard, um, some of the things I would change as far as accountability are to, to develop more of a trust. There's been too many, too many incidents and recently in our, in our local area with, with elected officials and, and I, I think the accountability issue is, is, is a major issue. What I would do is expand the website that the Register of Wills has to just base, from basic information, like telephone numbers, the hours of operation, I would expand the website to become completely accountable to the taxpayers. So they would know hours worked, what you're doing, even the staff, so that you could develop more of a, of a trust, which not that the trust is lacking, but there's a lot of skeptical people out there today. The other thing I would do is, um, as far as assess accessibility, explore the possibility of opening evening hours in remote sites on the weekend, and I say explore that possibility. Um, I think going to remote sites once or twice a month for the possibility of uh, residents that cannot come down to downtown Scranton. Um, nowadays, with the economy, a lot of people have lost their jobs. They don't have any their own automobile. They're, they're, they have to utilize public transportation. Um, if you could bring bring your office to the people and in various municipalities, uh, I think that's an, an option that I, I would like to explore when uh, and if I'm elected. And educate the public. I work in the sheriff's office, and one thing I found out, and one of the reasons I ran is people come into the courthouse looking for the Register of Wills, they do not know where the Register of Wills office. A lot of people, some people do, some don't. And the other thing is, as Mike, I believe, alluded to earlier, is they don't realize what the office does. And I'd like to educate the public to that. Okay, thank you. We'll do one more round. Everybody gets a minute. You can, but you need to pull the microphone closer. And Kim, also, when you're speaking, can you make sure the mic's sure. in front of you? We um, had um, uh, Saturday hours. And we worked that out with the union because uh, you are under the constraints of a contract, and you can't open up a contract. So early on, when Linda Munley and I first went into the office, we asked the union, they agreed. So we d were opened occasionally on, uh, once a month on Saturdays. And, but now that you can file online for a marriage license, there is no need for that any longer. Um, like I said, we extend a courtesy if someone calls you know, for marriage records, we do. Um, we also do occasionally go out. If someone calls and says that they are incapacitated at home for a broken leg or a bad hip, we do go out and probate w with the attorney at a residence. Uh, we don't do it often, but we do do it. Okay. And so there, there is some accountability there. The okay. union contract sort of keeps you in. Okay, Paul, and we'll go right around, okay? Thank you. I agree with what Fred says, but the one thing 
One thing in particular, not everybody has a computer. Not everybody knows how to use a computer. Not everybody has access to a computer. So I think what I said earlier about going out into the public, doing remote sites uh, to do it, bring the paperwork to the public, let them come in. If you go to, say, South Abington Township this month and maybe Taylor Borough next month, you're going to have people come to you that live in that, that, that particular municipality. And again, not everybody is computer savvy. Uh, like some people are, a lot of people aren't. So that's where, where I came with my changes, what I would do if I was elected to the office. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Mike, anything you'd like no, to I'm add? Good. Kim, anything you'd like to add? Um, you know, I'd just like to add that it, it's, you have to analyze the customer and the service that's needed to be provided before you can de decide what kind of services you, you can provide within the constraints of like a union contract or the sheriff security in the county building. Oh, I'm doing it again. The sheriff security there in the county go. building or th <clears throat> there's a myriad of things that need to, to happen to be able to open and function an office. So you have to do a cost benefit analysis against the customer service and what it costs you to provide it and how you can provide it again most efficiently. Okay, thank you. So the next question that I'm going to ask will pertain to, I talked earlier about the ballot questions that will be on our uh, primary ballot on May 21st. One of those has a direct impact on these folks who are sitting uh, on the stage this evening. The question that's on the ballot is, shall the Lackawanna County Home Rule Charter be amended to abolish the elected office of the Register of Wills and deem the duties and responsibilities associated with that abolished office as legislative powers under section 1.3-302 of the Lackawanna County Home Rule Charter, said amendment to take effect upon expiration of the elected register of wills current term. Now, if you want more in-depth discussion on what the ballot questions mean, again, I'll point you to ECTV, to our website, and to the program that we taped last evening pertaining to all of the, uh, the questions that are on the ballot. But the elected register of wills current term will expire December 31st. So basically what the voters in Lackawanna County are being asked is do you want this office to no longer be an elected office and do you now want it to be fall under administrative services basically for Lackawanna County. So Kim, I'm going to ask you to answer this question first and should this be an elected position, why or why not? Please explain why you feel that way and do pull the microphone closer to you. Put it right here, how's that? Thank you. <laughs> um, well, I, I believe any elected official serves at the will of the people. And I think any office that manages a budget should serve a, at the will of the people, who's a revenue gathering, service providing, arm of government should serve at the will of the people. So I do believe that this should be an elected office. I think it is the right question to ask the electorate. I mean, they need to be educated at what this office does, what it provides to the community, what services it provides, what, what uh, revenue it provides. Um, but any revenue generating office or head of an office needs to be elected and serve at the will of the people. I believe. Thank you. Fran, the question goes to you. Yes, and please pull that close. I do believe that it should be an elected office. Obviously, I think the four of us would agree on that, or we wouldn't be here. But we want to know why you feel that way. I believe that the office uh, has the uh, ability to deal with individuals rather than consolidate, put these individuals in, um, I want to say, a setting where there's a counter, where you're dealing across the counter with someone filing uh, criminal records, uh, criminal uh, charges. You're dealing with a parent that just lost a child. You're dealing with someone that's having an adoption, uh, private information. Um, the current plan, as I know it today, is that we, they would all be in one area with one counter and um, that everything would come across this county and you'd deal with everyone across the counter. Um, that's not a good way to do this type of work. There are certain offices, yes, that can handle that, but the Register of Wills um, is not an office that, 
that can operate under those conditions. Um, it ha has been shown to be a, a profit maker for the county. It's a small business within the county. It has done a good job. It is moving forward, continuing to do a good job. So I believe uh, the record uh, is there to say that this office has done a good job and it needs to be elected and not an appointed position. Okay, thank you. Paul, the same question to you. Should it be an elected position? And please explain why you feel that way. Well, like Fran said, we're all up here for the same reason and I think we all have the same answer, but positively, the citizens and the voters of Lackawanna County should have that right to vote for these offices. And in particular, because we're running for it, would be the Register of Wills. I totally disagree with the, uh, the referendum questions as they're set forth. I think um, what, what's being attempted to be done here is to commingle three, three different offices. And as Fran said, uh, especially in their office of Register of Wills, you have to be compassionate because there's going to be that time, in particular time, that your people are going to be coming in and it's going to be a sad and it's going to be a very unhappy time for them. I can't see someone coming in to a one large office to a, a, a loved one just passed away and then someone's going to be looking for to get their criminal record expunged at the same time. You just can't commingle it that way. I think we have that right. We were given that right as a democratic society to be able to have um, the vote for the elected offices. They've been operating for a long time now. The Register of Wills is a very complex office. There's many, many duties, and I do not believe that you could commingle them with the other, with the Register or the Recorder of Deeds or the Clerk or the Judicial Records. Keep them separate. And for that reason, I believe, and we'll all agree to this, is that we, uh, the voters of Lackawanna County, you should have the right to vote for your elected offices, and not only the three I mentioned, but the Sheriff's Office also. Okay, thank you. And Mike, the question to you. Well, again, of course I believe this should be elected office. And if they did abolish it, eliminate it, consolidate it, um, those powers of who the commissioners would, would appoint people to run these offices. And you're just giving the commissioners more power. And power corrupts. You should, it just should stay a single office, elected officials. You're taking the voting right away from the people. You're taking the power for you to tell us what to do away from you. We can't go out on Saturdays and help you out if you have a broken hip. We can't do that. You, this people, I'm here to serve the people. Now, I, I, this was my number one concern on the whole ballot of the, this, you know, getting rid of the offices. What concerns me with this referendum is that you talk, again, you talk to most people and you listen. And what are they going to tell you? Because of a sour economy and uh, corruption out there in the political world. Want to get rid of a government office? Absolutely get rid of it. They have to be informed to keep those, these offices in play. Uh, right now, with the way, the way the America is going, I think most people would abolish the Senate and Congress if they were given the, 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 the try. But no, it is an elected office, has to be an elected office. They all should be elected office. There's only 11 uh, officers, and, and they want to knock it down to seven. Leave the commissioners, they have enough on their minds, let us run our office with the recorder of deeds and register of wills and sheriff's office and et cetera. Okay, thank you. That concludes the questions that we have for our candidates this evening. And I want to say that Kim Kelly should go out and buy a lottery ticket tonight <laughs> because when or we not. drew names, <laughs> we drew her name twice. So, uh, Kim, you'll give your first closing uh, would statement. Would that be the booby prize? <laughs> <laughs> Each candidate will be allowed two minutes for their closing statement. Thank you very much, and it's, it's been a great evening. Thank you very much, Andrea, for this um, opportunity. Um, it's, it's 2013. All of our government offices need to be run like businesses. There needs to be efficiency. There needs to be an eye on service. There needs to be review of contracts when we can. Um, there needs to be a business process. There needs to be an understanding of the systems. I have been in business for over 25 years. I've been in a number of different industries. I've been in healthcare. I've been in insurance, um, I've been in manufacturing, I've been in warehousing, but all of these jobs have had the same basic principle. I've been at the director level. I am running a budget, I am running a department, I am providing a service, and I am doing it efficiently. 
And I think that is exactly what not just the Register of Wills needs, but that's the office I'm running for, but every office in government in 2013 needs to keep their eye on what businesses have been keeping their eye on for the past however many years I've been in business, 20 plus. Um, that's why I feel I'm the best. I've done this time and again. I've done it well. I've done it efficiently. And I've provided a service within a budget and improved the service year over year. I, I believe that experience and that background makes me the most qualified person to take over the Register of Wells office and to make it better if I can. Thanks. Thank you. Fran, your closing statement. Again, pull that mic closer. Thank you. I'm the only candidate with 18 years of proven experience. My record stands by itself as far as the digitalization. Uh, when the office first came in, when I first came into the <coughs> office in 1995, we had the big old index books where you would hand write into the books. Everything was a paper file. Today, we have digitalized, like I said earlier this evening, uh, over three million uh, pieces of paper through the Register of Wills 1878 to the current, 300,000 uh, marriage applications. I have proven to re be able to reduce the bus budget and be financially responsible. Uh, the state of Pennsylvania does a, a audit every three years, and for the past 18 years, we have had a perfect audit. No findings, perfect audit. The county does ongoing uh, audits, and we just had our county audit done from 1901, I mean, for, I'm sorry, from 2001 to t the end of 2012 without so much as a finding. So my public record on the accounting part of what we do is excellent, no problems. We are accountable to the public that comes in. The public that walks through our door is our uh, boss. So we treat them with great respect. We treat everyone that comes in to the office with the same respect, whether you're an attorney or whether you're uh, just a little old lady coming down the street to pay her tax. We collected in the last five years 68 million in the, uh, from the Pennsylvania Department of Revenue as an agent. We um, hold ourselves uh, very comfortable with the idea of good service, pride ourselves in uh, doing what is right by the public. We are part of the Orphans Court of Lackawanna County on top of that. Thank you, Paul. Two minutes for your closing statement as well. Um, thank you very much for having us again tonight. And to my fellow candidates, I wish everyone the best, and I wish the best to all the candidates in other offices. Um, I alluded to earlier about off hours for the Register of Wills. One of the things as an elected official, sometimes you have to go above and beyond to do just your normal nine to five or nine to four. Well, I think one of the things that as an elected official or your deputy, you can handle the night hours and the weekend hours, and you won't have to worry about any of your uh, contract problems that could, that could come up. With that being said, some of my qualifications are as follows. I've been involved in many um, community service projects for, the, for children and, the, and for the senior citizens in the Dunmore area especially. I'm a member of the Black Sheep from West Scranton. We do um, fundraising for needy children. I've been on the Dunmore Senior Citizens Board, Center Board of Directors for the past 14 years, serving our senior citizens and their needs in Dunmore Borough. I've been on the advisory board of the CTT, the CTC Center, the Career Technology Center, Public Safety Advisory Board. I'm a member of Unico. These are all organizations that are community service minded, and I've been a member for a while, as well as St. Anthony's Church, the Fraternal Order of Eagles, the FOP, the Order of Sons of Italy, the Friendly Sons of St. Patrick. Again, I work for Lackawanna County Sheriff's Office. I'm very familiar with the court proceedings. I also work part-time for Alpha and Old Forge Police. I've been protecting and serving the public for over 20 years. I, want, I feel I'm the most qualified to be able to protect and serve the integrity and the security of the records of the Register of Wills. I'm a six-term member of Dunmore Borough Council. I'm serving my sixth term. One of the things we did in Dunmore Borough, we eliminated the majority-minority nonsense that went on in Dunmore. 
I found this paper and I just want to point it out. It says, this is from January 9th, 2009. Dunmore I, I's bankruptcy. Well, this current council, we work together. We work teamwork, seven council members working together on an $11 million budget, and I pledge to bring the same teamwork to the Register of Wills office and manage the office in the same way. Thank you. And Mike, finally, your two minutes. Okay, I don't really, I don't think I need two minutes. I always went by the KISS message, keep it short and sweet. Um, my mother taught me to be a humble man, so I don't really, I find it hard to pat myself on the back. Um, like I said earlier, I uh, come from the private sector. I have like sp county government experience in Delaware County down near Philadelphia. And for the last 30 years, I've been in the private sector where I have been, I have numerous awards and plaques and, you know, that come along with that. And uh, I think from an outsider in politics looking in, I bring those experiences to the job and I'll make a difference. Uh, I may already made a difference in a personal, I, like I said, I've never been in politics, politics before. But as I go the week to week and I go to these functions and everybody says it's a grind, it, it, I find it kind of, it's fun. Because you, you shake somebody's hand, you can sense the sincerity in their eyes when you ask for the vote, then you, know, you got it. Now I might get 200 winks and 100 votes, but it, that's, it's a good thing and I've had a lot of fun with it. So thank you very much. Thank you. How about a round of applause for all of our candidates? Thank you so much for your commitment to democracy and for coming out to join us here this evening. We appreciate that. And I want to remind everyone again, I can't begin to stress enough the importance of the ballot questions on our ballot uh, on May 21st. There are five questions, four of them that ask specifically about eliminating offices in, uh, as elected officials in Lackawanna County. And then the fifth question that pertains to seating a Home Rule Charter Study Commission. And there are 38 candidates who are vying for seven seats on the commission. I do really urge you strongly to uh, watch the program that we taped last evening uh, and to make sure that regardless of whether you're a Democrat or Republican, registered in any other party, registered as an independent, even though it's a primary, get out and vote. It is important to Lackawanna County that we, that we hear the voices of all of the registered voters in Lackawanna County. So uh, visit the League of Women Voters website for additional information. Watch ECT. TV, and thank you again for being here this evening.